Hello, welcome back Free Flow folks. My name is Sorsha and in today's video, we're gonna be exploring inner summer, AKA ovulation phase, ovulatory phase of the cycle. Um, a little a little 101, a little ditty. Uh, if you haven't already checked out um, menstrual phase 101, AKA inner winter, or follicular phase uh, 101, aka in the spring, please do have a little look at those. Um, and so I'm really, really distracted because my glasses keep making these shadows <laughs> on my face. Um, but yeah, so um, we're gonna just hop in today. So uh, let's get started. So I've got my little my little cheat sheet. Um, I think this is on my free download ready study chart. Definitely check that out. And I think I also have it on my other at the moment it's free, so grab it whilst it's free. Um, download ADHD, PMDD, and Me Survival Guide. So yes, yeah, my little my little cheat sheet. I probably will do a little update to it soon because it doesn't have a few things on it like hormone fluctuations and things, but it's all good it's all good done is better than perfect so <laughs> i'm currently in my um in the summer right now i'm on cycle day 13 i'm definitely ovulating um i know that because maybe this is tmi but i've got the egg white going on i've got the egg white going on gang so that's how you know <laughs> for sure um but yeah so obviously you know um cervical mu mucus is one way to know this but um you can also tell with the um just kind of for me i can always tell with how i'm feeling i've just realized i'm speaking really fast and i'm really overexcited so i'm just gonna bring it down a little bit and calm down um so ovulation ovulatory phase ovulatory phase um can also be known as inner summer um big shout out to red school please remember the big red rule uh, your own experience trumps everything else. Um, yeah, hats off to Shane and Alexandra for, yeah, discussing this language so that we can talk about um, cycles kind of with this beautiful framework of um, the seasons. Um, you can even kind of go a step further as one of my friends has done and kind of have this almost as like the wheel of the year as well. Um, so we've just had spring equinox, I think literally yesterday, because it's, it's Thursday. Uh, Thursday the 21st today? 22nd let me just check my watch does it say on here thursday the 21st 21st so i think it's yeah i think it's you know last yesterday slash today um yeah so we've just had spring equinox and um yeah there's a whole way we can even explore that further with kind of the wheel of the year with um astrology but i won't go into that right now so <laughs> um in the summer um and if you're using the moon as an anchor for your cycle as you if you're using the moon to you know to kind of track tr to track your cycle to have that anchor then this would be the full moon um so when it's all beautiful and round and i mean it's always round but <laughs> it's like at its most round and fullest and just shiny and beautiful and bright um a little bit how a lot of us can feel during ovulation um, I think the ovulatory phase is really, really interesting. I think that it was, for me, um, the... I mean, luteal phase was definitely the biggest challenge because of PMDD, which we'll go into next video. But I think that ovulatory phase, for me, has that... Um, I should be doing all of the things because I feel like Wonder Woman with my cape, you know, my cape flying around. And actually I can get really, really overwhelmed in ovulatory phase and um, it's horrible. So uh, it's been a very interesting journey and I want to just shout out to Mez Coleman, um, who is amazing. And she, um, I think I mentioned her in the, um, in a winter video, but we did um, two podcast episodes uh, Mez reached out to me having listened to some of my podcast episodes that I do with my cousin called Free Flow and um and she just wrote me just wrote me some really great messages on um Instagram and I was like hi oh, this woman's vibe is you know I really like this person I'd love to try and see if she wants to come on the podcast and she agreed to she's over in Melbourne uh, Australia so it was really cool to be able to sit down and, and have a chat with her probably was about a year ago now um and we recorded two episodes because we we just had so much to say and she um going going back to what we're talking about she was talking about how she um 
she has i think she called it like follow did she call it follow follow the threads i think she she said follow the threads or maybe i don't know we came up with that concept as we were talking but basically she leaves um she leaves space in her diary now for ovulatory phase because she's noticed as a musician singer songwriter um and also you know mum and she you know has another full-time job etc um that she needed to carve out some space in her ovulatory phase because she was kind of putting in everything in the schedule to do it then um, because she knew she'd have the energy but actually she was also just finding herself getting quite overwhelmed um, and just yeah not you know not very focused and and kind of burnt out so this really um, really really appealed to me and I love scheduling I love oh I just love planning um, I don't know if this, this is maybe an ADHD thing but I just love planning the stuff execution <laughs> It can be really challenging or finishing but I just love planning like I feel like sometimes my ideal job would just be just planning other people's lives <laughs> but I probably do like I probably plan like way too much in a day and then be like why why are you not getting it done in a day um so if this is something that you have noticed as well then I think that um yeah having leaving a little bit carving a bit of time out to um follow the spontaneity of ovulatory phase because there is so much beautiful spontaneity that can happen um and i think if we are so kind of bogged down in like for me i could be like got to film all the videos got to do this got to do this got to do that. there's lots and lots of output or like you know even just um, helping other people more because i just have the capacity to do so um because of the hormones etc that actually um if I'm not careful, I get really overwhelmed and then I don't really know where to focus. And I know that in linking in with that, something I have also struggled with is that I have all of this energy. You can probably tell now, I feel like the energy is like radiating through the screen. I've got all of this energy, but actually I don't always have a lot of focus because I actually just kind of feel like quite chaotic. Um, so yeah as we go through this video i'll kind of give you a few ideas of what, what i've done that really help but i also would love to do a whole separate video on um you know each stage of the cycle i'd like to do some shadow sides and i'd also just like to do some like lessons learned and um you know some of the good stuff as well so um and i also want to point out that you know <laughs> uh there are also kind of naff sides to each part of the cycle as well there are there are not so great parts to every phase in the cycle and and ovulatory is also one of them and um you know something that might be um something that springs to mind would be if you're trying to conceive you know and if you're um either you know having issues with that or maybe ovulatory phase has become you know this kind of part where it's like you know we 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 need to we need to get we need to do the horizontal dance i don't know if i can say the s word without getting I don't know whatever so um <laughs> we need to do the horizontal dance um and maybe there's that pressure there you know but there is I mean even if you're not trying to conceive there's lots of different stuff that goes on and I think it's really easy to kind of like kind of stick a big shiny bright sticker on ovulatory phase and actually um you know let's just accept that actually there are shadow sides to every every part of the cycle i think luteal phase which we'll do next next video um that's blindingly obvious i think we all know <laughs> the shadow sides of luteal phase um and there are some really dark sides to that as well um but there's also i think as much as i want to shed light the lightness of the luteal phase i think i also want to share that there is shadows in the ovulatory phase so i won't do that in today's video because it will be too much but um that is just something i don't know why i'm doing this with my hands um also got this top from vinted and i'm just loving it i think it's a good color um i am wearing a bra underneath because i was a bit paranoid that i'd have like a boob or a nip slip um but it's really it's really comfy so i'm just excited to be finally wearing it and i thought ov i'm ovulating and i'm doing an ovulatory video so now's the time i feel like i need to be like sa -da -sa, sa -da -sa. um okay focus focus radigan so what else have I got? Full moon, yeah, so full, full moon, <laughs> go back to that. Um, so the full moon part of your cycle, um, if you're following the moon. And again, big red rule, if you if this doesn't work for you, maybe for you, um, when it's a full moon, you actually feel more like you're in menstrual phase. Again, uh, please check out my moon video on that because I kind of you know dive into it a bit more. Workouts, let's talk about workouts. Um, actually no let's talk about let's talk about words first of all because i think i've been doing that for the last few videos and it's been quite fun so um in case you can't tell high energy <laughs> if we look at my little what's the time mr wolf then you can see um ovulatory phase 
high energy and this is because we have the um, we do have a little steady rise now in um, progesterone I believe if I'm just remembering my my chart correctly I will put it in um, in this video and um, we do have like a gentle rise of progesterone um, that will really kind of come into peak in the in the luteal phase but we also have a rise in estrogen and we also have a little rise with some testosterone as well and I think it's um, Claire Barker um, who I'm actually going to put she's got a really great quote about um, uh, about um, ovulatory phase and just even like the th kind of 30s part of your cycle um, that I'm going to put at the beginning of this um, of this YouTube video and I just really love it but um, she speaks about um, this being like the Beyonce, the Beyonce kind of hormone, the Beyonce kind of cocktail I think, um, the Beyonce cocktail of hormones so um, yeah we kind of have this yeah because you just feel like you can do anything <laughs> um you yeah so we have this we do have the the bit of a rise in the, the progesterone but we also have the rise in estrogen and like i say a little bit of uh, a kick of the testosterone in there as well so i think that in terms of um my experience of this and i'm sure many other people and but also just in, especially with an adhd lens slash experience i have noticed that um my kind of most ideal day and actually myself and julia did a recording about this in on the free flow podcast about our ideal day and we kind of shared our like dream ideal day for each season and it was really fun um but my kind of ideal day and what i've done today um because i don't work thursdays i went to the gym i worked out hard had you know had some good food went to the gym worked out hard had a little protein shake and you know a quick shower and got ready and stuff and I'm, I've sat down here to film but I have to do I have to get out some physical energy um otherwise I am just like there's no focus at all and I also as I said in the previous episode with regards to the kind of the action phase of um follicular phase about planning I also have to plan what I'm going to do this is this is why I feel this is so important if I don't plan what's that phrase if you plan to if you don't plan you plan if you plan to fail you don't plan what's the phrase fail to plan you fail to succeed I think that's the one anyway <laughs> I find that if I haven't got a plan slash structure in, in place it doesn't have to be super duper strict but if I don't have a plan ready for ovulatory phase I have all of this creative energy and I don't have an out and I don't have something to pour it into. I don't have like a creative outlet and I just lose my mind a little bit. <laughs> so um, I think this is just as someone that's a very creative person, I need to be creating lots. I just need to be creating. Doesn't have to be good. I'm not saying, you know, this stuff is amazing. Like these videos, I'm finding them really fun. I am trying to get out of my own perfectionist mindset of having them like done is better than perfect. And I'm filming it all on my phone. I don't own a laptop. I'm editing on my iPad. That's really, really old. And I'm using this like lamp that gets really hot. <laughs> if you move it uh, my dad gave me like years ago and it's like a floor lamp like I'm just using what I have and I'm really excited to see how those things get better over time like the quality of things I can produce and create over time when I have a bit of money to you know put into those things but at the moment I'm working with what I have because I want to get this message out here and I'm really passionate about it and I need a creative outlet man I just need this to kind of come out so um yeah so just harping back to that again I think having a plan, a structure in place. So just right on cue, my camera, my phone ran out of space. <laughs> so this is what I mean. When I'm filming on it, I have to um, airdrop to my iPad because my, I my iPad has more storage space and my phone just fills up really quickly. But the camera is better on my phone. Anyway, <laughs> what I was saying is that, um, yeah, if I have a plan in place that... Um, uh, for me, I use my cycle as that plan because it just comes more naturally. Like I was saying in, in a spring video, the urge to plan like for a couple of days, like cycle day four and five, I'm like, oh, I just got to get planning and organizing. And I just don't have that um, that drive on the same. I do have that drive in other days of my cycle, but it's not as clear and defined and easy to do. Um, so it, I'm all about like optimizing your cycle and working with it. Um, and with you know the brain chemistry especially with having adhd just to try and make a little bit more um you know make it a little bit more easeful so yeah having that having that plan in place and that kind of loose structure then i feel like okay i know what i need to do today like when i woke up today i was like 
I know what I need to do. I've already planned out my calendar and um, I'm running a bit behind with it, but like, well, when am I not? So that's fine. Um, but I know, you know, what I'm, what, I, what I'm expected to do today. And then when I go to bed tonight, you know, the idea is I'm not like beating myself up because I didn't do all of the other things I, you know, a load of, a load of things I just would not have, have, have had time to do. So I think that's really, really important in ovulatory phase. And I think if you struggle with time blindness as well, um, then I think that's even more important because otherwise we can kind of really try to kind of overpack our days. And I, when I look at my calendar, sometimes I'm like, but when it, what, there's just not enough physical time to do all of these things, or so like, that's okay. Like, what can we get done today? Um, and still sleep and eat and take care of ourselves. So yeah so i think um yeah so for ovula ovulation phase that's how i i i experience it anyway and um and yeah i really i do struggle with the, the level of focus so i feel more focused in follicular and luteal than i do in in a summer because i'm quite whoo all the energy is there so again having those plans in place just helps me to like be aware of what it is i want to do and i do have the energy to output so i do have the energy to sit here and film like I think I've got about five videos I'm going to be filming today because I have the energy to do that um whereas I know next week I won't have as much energy to do that but I'll be much more ready for like editing and doing things like that so um one day maybe I'll do a video on like how I structure my my business and things around my cycle I don't know if people would find that interesting I think you could definitely apply it like if you don't have you know um entrepreneurial dreams as well I think you could do it you know I think it would be really a very serving video anyway <laughs> uh, but so I think the um, three words I would choose here are um, confident expanding and abundant I feel like this is a really yeah it's a very kind of confident time in the cycle I think if you have to you know if we could if we could plan every part of our lives <laughs> into great detail um, and we didn't have to take anyone else into account I think you know if you had for example like a really important meeting or you were giving a really important presentation at work, um, this would be like the time to do it. This kind of like nice little sort of five, five ish days would be really nice time to do it because you would just have that natural confidence that you're exuding. So, um, expanding and abundant. Yeah, I just feel like this. There, there is this expanding energy. I think I spoke about it in the two vias video so the via positiva and the via negativa and this is kind of part of the via positiva um and we are really in that expanding kind of energy and i think with that just comes you know an abundance abundance can be that can be good things or it can be like not so great things you know so i think um yeah if we kind of clearing the way kind of having those plans in place and then we have this like oh we've got this abundant of time this abundant of energy what am I going to put it into? Um, I think it's really important. So, and then I think the, yeah, the mood here, um, the mood here I'd say is magnetic. I feel like it's a, yeah, it's kind of a magnetic, it's a magnetic frame of mind. I feel like it's much more, yeah, magnetizing, we're attracting. And then some people, and I, I'd actually be really interested to know if this is, if this is the case for you, but, um, and I don't, because I don't live with my boyfriend, we're in different cities. Um, I haven't really experienced it, like, yeah or sometimes i'll be like oh yeah we were really touchy-feely that weekend and i just happened to be ovulating but i think it'll be really interesting um if i ever remember <laughs> i think it'd be really interesting to see like do you notice um that your partner is more like touchy-feely or just like you know flirty and things or maybe you are I mean, obviously it's kind of a bit of a dance right it's probably you know be kind of feeding off those energies but i think that um when we are in ovulatory phase there is that um because of because of the hormones and the pheromones going on i think there is that kind of um it's sort of the most like potent like the most potent time of like you know you are able to have babies and like i think there's an attraction there's like a very primal attraction that happens there and you know you might i mean i'm not saying like you know you'd be you know all the other times in your cycles you might be really hands off but i think like there is a bit of a dance and i think come ovulation some of the people i've had these conversations with really notice like oh yeah my partner's like way more like hands-on and touchy and flirty with me so um yeah i just and it's and it just i just it just it just blows my mind like how how old, how our bodies are but anyway but, um create i mean i've put create i think like, i don't think i can really say you know i think the other like i say with the follicular phase is all about planning i feel like you know with ovulatory phase the urge is there to create um, that could be life that could be a project that could be a house and setting that up with how can you tell i don't own a house <laughs> like houses um it could be it doesn't have to be like just you know creating life it can be you know creating other things and 
Um, I won't harp on about that because I feel like I've really covered the need to create. Um, and I'm just really curious if you're watching this and you are not neurospicy or you don't have ADHD, I would love to know, like, does, do you find this as well? Does it, I feel like with ADHD, sometimes everything is so much more intensified in our emotions. So when I'm like, I need to create something, like I can't, I don't talk to my need to create. <laughs> um, I feel like that is really, really, really strong. And I'm just, I'm just curious to know if it's, you know, from some from uh, people that don't have ADHD, or maybe you, I don't know, maybe you have autism or something different. Or do you kind of feel the same way? Um, I am curious. Um, also, I feel like I say this every video, but please ignore my nails because I just keep, um, I just keep like I'm filming and I'm, I'm like I must do my nails before filming, but then like I just stay awake watching true crime things and I don't do my nails. <laughs> And then I get up and go to the gym and I still have done my nails. So anyway, uh, okay, last two bits of this video. Um, I put whole grain and eggs for food. Obviously you can eat more than whole grain and eggs. Um, again, I think I said it in the follicular video. There are a whole host of um, YouTubers and um, Instagram uh, nutritionists uh, who are actually trained in this area. But I just think it's um, really interesting with what you feel like more. I'm trying to think, I think there was a... I'm, I'm sure I mentioned this on the podcast, but I'm sure there was a period of time for like three years where um, I was reading, you know, eggs are really great when you're you know, like in your ovulation phase, like it's just a good thing to eat. And I was so repelled by the smell of eggs just in that part of my cycle, like every other time my cycle. And I say this because I really like a good omelette because it's just really quick to make in the morning um, after the gym and um, or sometimes before. But uh, anyway, it's just really quick to make. And I was just like, oh, I just just feel a bit nauseous like thinking about eating um and I just thought it was really funny because it was like you know the eggs I'm ovulating and I don't, I'm repulsed by actual eating eggs anyway um so yeah I, but I have put here eggs and whole grain I feel like in follicular phase I am more drawn to like sort of yeah lighter lighter foods and that for me kind of weaves back into ovulatory phase here as well so I'm much more likely to have um if I'm gonna have a salad it's got to be like a filling salad um I'm probably more likely to have I don't know like a, a sandwich or um just something not cooked like I'm very much like all about my lentils and 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 brown rice and things um which I'll kind of talk about a bit more again in in uh, the next video luteal phase but I think that yeah here it's a bit like you know the season of summer like I don't want to have loads of um heavy foods um i will say that i do still try and have some grounding foods in there i'm kind of like my my kind of staples are like sweet potatoes and, and rice um, and i will kind of continue to have those in my inner summer i think just because naturally i'm a very like ooh high energy kind of up in the sky person and i find those kind of grounding ground me a little bit if you find you have quite a lot of tamas like heavy energy um um then you might want to have more like juices and smoothies and things during this time it might kind of help to lift that um that's something that i spoke about with julia on the brown rice uh macrobiotic brown rice uh diet video that we did uh not video podcast episode that we did um but yeah so i'm just intrigued to see like how you find it with with your food um and again you know i'm in england so the weather is just so unpredictable so i feel like i definitely notice a shift in the outer season and the inner season um with what foods i'm drawn to and i yeah i mean i'm much more likely like today i'm really excited to have like some sea bass i've got some sea bass i'm really excited to have that with a little bit of garlic butter some rice and veggies um and i've got a real craving for like carrot sticks <laughs> um so i just kind of have those cravings for those like kind of lighter foods um and then lastly uh i will um yeah i'm more like to go to like group workout classes so in terms of like movement yeah group workout classes or more high impact um maybe some running um yoga wise maybe more like of a vinyasa yoga flow however i will caveat that by saying it depends how chaotic I'm feeling. So again, big red rule. No, 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 uh, no cycle is necessarily the same. So last cycle, I might have been like, yeah, I really want to go for a run in my ovulatory phase. I'm just craving that. Great. This cycle, I might be like, you know what? It's been a really busy week with work and I actually just need to like have some restorative chill yoga instead. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, just because you have the energy to pour into stuff, you know, I think a lot of the time with the cycle things, we talk about how the ovulatory phase is kind of the main phase of the cycle where we can really pour into others and other things and, you know, 
I don't know, offer to host a sleepover or whatever. But I think that in every part of the, 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 the cycle, because of the world we live in now, I think it's never selfish to hold back a little bit for yourself. And I think ovulatory phase, you can still do that. Don't run yourself into the ground and burn out trying to be all the things and do all the things to everyone else. I think this is something that I have, you know, I've, I, I am still practicing. And I think it's okay. Okay, run out of space again. So <laughs> that's the third, third and final segment. Um, but basically what I was just saying is that, yeah, I think it's don't be afraid to hold a little bit of, of juice in the tank for yourself um, during the ovulatory phase of the cycle. And yeah, just to kind of circle back to the exercise, I noticed that for me, this is a really fun time where I will try and hit some personal bests in the gym um i really enjoy weight training during this this part of my cycle and i actually really enjoy it anyway to be honest but um yeah i'm maybe more likely to do um running i haven't i haven't been running for a while i kind of go through phases where i really enjoy it and then phases where i just don't really crave it so much and i'm I'm just not at the moment but um definitely yeah maybe some more of the, like the flow work and um some more uh yeah just just hitting personal best i find that um luteal phase the early part of it i can be a bit more like uh, a bit more awake but then i can kind of get a bit more tired so and then i'll not go to the gym when i'm on my period so i find for me like follicular phase is kind of the warm-up act and then ovulatory phase i'm like okay let's just try and see if i can hit some personal bests now whether that's just going up up a level in weights or maybe just doing an extra set or um maybe just uh doing a higher amount of reps so that's something i really like to play with um and again just having adhd it just helps to stop me you know getting super bored um and i did mention quite a few uh youtuber youtubers in my last video um of things that i really like to do so um sometimes yeah in ovulatory phase I'll, I'll kind of do some of that as well i tend to do more more hit and things i'd say like in my follicular phase because i don't necessarily feel as drawn to weightlifting slash I may be kind of coming out of that like uh, bleed restful phase and I'm kind of doing like maybe just some lighter weights or or lower reps and then um, having a bit of, bit of fun. I'm just kind of more like, yeah, kind of wanting to have a bit more fun um, in follicular phase. Like, so I just like kind of doing more of the dance things and having a workout in that way. Whereas I feel like with in a summer in ovulatory phase, although I maybe struggle a bit with sometimes with the focus for like written work, um, and that kind of thing maybe even even like you know to a level of you know filming and things maybe that focus isn't as much there because i actually just want to be like moving my body more so i feel like i kind of just give myself that you know that uh, enjoyment of like okay that actually the the urge here is to like you know really smash a workout in the gym um and that's fine because you know i'll have other other seasons of my cycle where other things will kind of be slightly more prioritized so yeah, I hope that was a good um, overview. I feel like I kind of went into a couple of topics in a bit more detail than I had planned, but um, hopefully that it served. I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you in my next video. If you enjoyed this video, if you got some fruit from it, let me know in the comments. Maybe share it with a friend. Maybe share it with lots of friends. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me. Okay, bye. Bye, 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 goodbye, goodbye. Now.